Welcome back to Gold and Black Live. Kyle Charter is here along with our guest for the day, Tony Ursland, in his first year with Purdue, uh, the Boilermakers wrestling team in the middle of their season and have a pretty big weekend, too, with uh, a couple of ranked teams on the on the schedule. That's not uncommon for the Big Ten. You play against uh, what, Northwestern, ranked 19th, and, and at Penn State on Sunday, ranked number five. Boy, it, it, it doesn't uh, ever get easy in the conference, does it? No, it's uh, it, it doesn't. It's much, you know, Big Ten wrestling is much like uh, SEC football where every week yeah. it's, it's another tough opponent in front of you, and any good win in the conference is, is a quality win. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go through your bio a little bit. You came to Purdue from Nebraska where you were, what, there for eight years? Eight years, correct. Graduated from Iowa. Obviously, the, the Hawkeye program, a very good one. You had good individual success there, and, and the team success – hard to match, uh, I think, right. with three NCAA championships and, and four Big Ten championships during your tenure. That's pretty impressive. And other coaching stops along the way. Uh, I guess, the, you know, all that said, you come to Purdue. Why, why Purdue, you think? You know, I, I felt like it was a great fit for me yeah. personally. I mean, um, the kids here are, are certainly uh, student athletes in the truest sense of the word. Uh, academics is not lost on this group here. It's important in, within the department in Morgan Burke, and that fits um, kind of my goal and my mission. I, I still look at myself as an educator. You know, I, athletics, I value all the lessons the kids learn outside of the classroom. And obviously, I'm a, I'm a competitive guy, and so I love, um, you know, competition, and, and there's no better place to be than Big Ten wrestling for that. Midwestern roots, you know, uh, coaching some at, at Northwestern, yep. uh, what, Northern Illinois and Central Michigan? Central like, Michigan, correct. Going to Iowa and, of course, Nebraska. So, I mean, does that help, you know, being uh, well-versed in the area when it comes to, to recruiting or sort of the style in which – you guys wrestle here, those kind yeah. of things? No, absolutely. Absolutely. Recruiting is a, a large part of that. I mean, not only, like I said, you know, the, the mission of the school, but um, this is my recruiting base. I've recruited and, and coached in the Midwest my entire life, my entire career. So it, it really does fit. I have lots of strong connections um, throughout the Midwest, you know, and nationally, but certainly here where we want to draw most of our kids. It's, it's comfort, you know, yeah. comfortable for me. Nebraska had a lot of success while you were there. Were you at a point in your career where you felt like, you know, looking for a, a head coaching job, it, it was sort of the, the right time to do that? Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, 17 years as an assistant, yeah. felt like I had seen everything and done everything and, and just really um, still had a fire in my belly to um, lead a program, develop young men on my own and, and see how far we can take it. And I certainly think this is a, is a great challenge uh, in the conference where you want to be as a coach. This is Golden Black Live. Just a shout out to our sponsors, Hilton Garden Inn, when tomorrow is a big day. Stay at HGI tonight. Also, State Farm agent Trent Johnson. Visit him on the web at trentismyagent.com. Triple X Family Restaurants on the hill but on the level. A Purdue tradition since 1929. And also Basham Rentals already leasing for the fall of 2015. Visit bashamrentals.com. If you have any questions for the coach, you can put those down in the comments or, uh, well, I guess, hit the little link there and email them into us and we'll. We'll pass them along and try to get them answered here during the show. Uh, we mentioned the Big Ten. You come into Purdue, which has been a good Big Ten program, you know, not where Iowa or, or Nebraska or Penn State or some of the others have been, certainly. How do, you, how do you take over a program like that when you have big aspirations and know that it's not going to happen? You don't have the kind of tradition right. that they have, so you can't build that in in six months or a year or even a couple of years. Right. I mean, I think the first thing we, we did, um, and probably the most important thing, it's it's building that relationship and the trust with the group, um, where they trust what you're doing, how you're coaching them, the, the principles you're trying to get them to buy into, that's huge. Um, because, you know, as we said, the Big Ten, it's very tough, week in and week out. Uh, tough losses, being sick, being injured, it's going to come, it's going to happen. Uh, if kids believe in you, believe in your plan, and they know that they're on that road to success, even if it's not here yet, they'll stay Stay on on that road. They'll yeah. they'll stay on with the plan, and then eventually success is going to come. It might not be this week, next week. It might be at the end of the month or in the national finals. But I think if kids understand and believe in what you're doing, the principles you're teaching, they'll stay on that road. They won't, you know. Sometimes when when kids take losses, they they, they quit believing in themselves or the plan, and now they're off in the woods, kind of just aimlessly wandering around. And uh, we've really tried to establish this is the plan. Trust us, believe in us. We've had success with it, and I feel like we've had great buy-in with the kids so far. And uh, it's going to serve them well as we move, move through it. I think the other part certainly is recruiting. Yeah. Any, any coach knows that. Uh, you're only as good as your talent. 
uh, but you're also looking for that, that toughness in kids. It's not just talent. I think we look for um, the minimum skill set that you need, and then we're really looking for attitude, uh, mm -hmm. work ethic, and things like that, just knowing that um, talent alone, you're going to be tested every week, and, and talent alone isn't going to take you where you want to go. So we're really looking for kids that have that work ethic and they have that mentality to want to grind and, and be yeah. pushed. Where do you go recruiting? Where, where are, around here, where are the wrestling hotbeds. I mean, you have some local guys, some guys from, from, yep. from Delphi, a few of them, uh, and some other places around Indiana, but is there, is there specific spots where you feel like you can go into and, and find some guys? We certainly want to lock down the borders of our state. You'll find good wrestling spread throughout Indiana, certainly up in the region, close to Chicago, even down here through Indianapolis, and then south. You have you know a school like Modern Day had, has had tremendous success over the years. So we want to lock down the borders here within our state and get the best talent and keep them here at Purdue. Uh, after that, you can go to Illinois, Michigan, Iowa, uh, Ohio. I mean, there's there's a lot of talent um, that we want to you know recruit close to home. But certainly, we want to recruit the best talent in the country. So we're going to recruit nationally as well. Yeah, I talked to you uh, maybe a couple of months ago, uh, sort of about the transition a little bit, in, in in particular with Braden Atwood and how he sort of led the group during your transition to mm -hmm. to becoming the head coach. What was that like? Because Scott Hinkle had been here for a long time, both an assistant as a head coach, a well liked guy by a yep. lot of people including a lot of his wrestlers, I would assume. Just what's that like to, to come in where you're the new guy? You certainly haven't done anything wrong. Right. Uh, and, right. and, uh, and you're trying to get guys to, to, follow, to follow you. Yeah, I, I think a lot of it is just starting with that common ground that you have. I mean, they want success. That's why they're here. They, yeah. you know, they certainly they want a success. They want to be pushed. And so I try to find that common ground. Um, that little thing that motivates each one of them. It's, it's different, you know. You compete as an individual in wrestling. You certainly score team points, but you compete as an individual. And so you're always looking for that common ground and what drives that athlete, what motivates him. And certainly, I think motivation drives you to do all those things when, it's, when training is tough because it's painful or it's tedious or it's boring <laughs> even, you know, in their yeah. eyes sometimes. It's, it's knowing what your motivation is. And we spend a lot of time revisiting what their motivation is, what their goals are, and keeping that, you know, in the forefront of their mind. It seems like you had some guys like Atwood sort of step up and, mm -hmm. and embrace you early on, which, which helped. Yeah, absolutely. The, the leadership here has been tremendous this year. I couldn't have asked for a better group uh, as a first-year coach. Like I said, they, they bought in and they uh, embraced us quickly, and that really helped us move forward. Sometimes you anticipate building that trust taking longer or not coming as easy. It's, you know, trust isn't always easily given by anybody. And, and these guys really, they, they were just hungry and eager to, hey, let's, let's move forward together. And that's, that's been uh, great. It's been better than I could have wished for. So you're 7-4 and four on the season, 0-2 in the Big Ten. Again, like we said, it's your Big Ten record isn't always reflective of, of where right. you stand nationally because you can have a, a poor, if you will, record in the Big Ten and, and still be ranked pretty, pretty high nationally. Uh, you know, sort of like uh, maybe more familiar people might be with volleyball or something like right. that around here and so strong the volleyball is. But uh, just how, you, how do you feel like things have gone through the, the non-conference and then a couple of weekends of the Big Ten? Yeah, I mean, overall, it's, it's been great. We started off 7-2 uh, and two in non-conference play and had some good wins. Uh, we have been ranked, you know, 23rd in one poll as a team and dual ranking was 25th in another. So we're, 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 we're doing okay. We've, we've done well in the non-conference part. I would say last week as we got into Big Ten play, um, we were competitive. But we didn't close out those really tight yeah. matches that you're always going to have inevitably in any in any tough dual meet. And so, for as a group, we need to really close out a match. I mean, we were right there knocking on the door, and really felt like, especially with the Wisconsin duel where we won four out of ten matches. You know, if you win a fifth and a sixth, now you're really in position to win. And and we felt like we let a cup, couple of opportunities get away. Um, and so we've we've really focused on the details of winning those little battles that will send a match in your favor. Yeah. It was nice of you to come today because you guys are pretty busy today. Uh, you have a, have right. a home match tonight against Northwestern, as I mentioned. They're, they're ranked 19th, 7 o'clock in Holloway Gymnasium. Uh, just what are, you, what are your expectations for tonight? Another tough duel. Yeah, we have another top 20 ranked team. They have um, some very good individuals. They have the defending national champ at 149 pounds, and I believe their heavyweight was ranked number one earlier in the year as well. So they have some quality individuals. Uh, but as I just mentioned, there, there's going to be 
Um, some matches we're favored in, some matches they're favored. It's going to come down to those toss-ups. Who can win those toss-ups in those tough situations? We feel like we have a tremendous opportunity tonight to capitalize on those. And if we can win uh, the tight matches, uh, we certainly are capable of winning tonight. You're always looking to grow your sport, I'm sure, particularly here at Purdue. It's a good spectator sport, isn't it? I mean, a, a, lot, of, a lot of action out there for people to watch if, if they come out to, to see you. Yeah, tonight or any other time. Absolutely, I, we you know, and we're preaching an aggressive mentality. Our, our our hashtag on our Twitter, if you follow us, <laughs> and please do. It's always aggressive, and that's the mentality we're trying to build. The culture we're trying to create. We always want to be trying to separate ourselves from our competition. We're not going to just judge ourselves on wins and losses. It's it's the process. You know, um, competing against yourself. How good can you be? Um, uh, you know, reaching your potential, and yeah. so. I really feel like that's starting to take hold, and it is a fun group to watch. Uh, we have uh, a few guys ranked in the top 23, I think, at the moment. So come on out and, and watch these guys get after people. Do you sort of have to take that approach? I mean, when you're maybe not, like you said, as talented as, as some of your competition, to sort of have something. The one thing you can do differently maybe is have a – a different attitude or a different mental approach? Absolutely. you got to control those things you can control, your motivation, your work ethic. Those things are absolutely within our control, and that's what we're going to do. Um, we'll, like I said, we'll keep recruiting, um, but we've got guys in there who can have success at the highest level. And um, if you look back at Nebraska, even though we didn't win the duel, um, we had an unranked wrestler beat the number two um, wrestler in the country, James Green. So certainly – now he's seen success, and he's, he's appeared in the top 20 for the first time. So these guys are starting to see that, that um, progress after just competing hard and, and you know, doing what's asked of them. So uh, hopefully we'll continue to see that. What you need to do, is, here's some advice for me, is just recruit entire families because you, you do have three guys right, <laughs> right. that are all – they're all competing for you right now, right? Uh, Correct. The, the Welch boys. Yeah. Yes. Um, we have twins, uh, Chad and Doug, and then their <laughs> younger brother, Luke, and they've all wrestled in the lineup for us. Matter of fact, all three won against yeah. Wisconsin. They were responsible for three quarters of our win total in that duel. Uh, it, wrestling can be a family affair. I have twin boys myself, and, <laughs> and you see it a lot. And, and, and maybe it's because they always have workout partners. Yeah. You know? It makes in-home visits a little easier. Yeah, two for the price of one. <laughs> we'll do it. There you go. Who are some of the other guys? We mentioned Atwood earlier. Who are some of the other guys that you really rely upon on a weekly basis? Yeah, uh, Danny Sabatello, having a lot of success at 133, has been great um, for our team. But really a lot of the seniors, um, Pat Robinson, um, Pat Kissel, Brandon Nelson, along with Atwood, those guys have all really um, shown the younger guys what it takes, you know, the work ethic, and being open to the staff and, and embracing what's going on. How's uh, how's recruiting going? Do you feel like you've you know in in the short runway you've had to to get things started? Have you feel like things are going positively? Yeah, yeah absolutely. We've recruited um, you know a, a nice class. We've had four four commits. Three guys were all ranked very highly in their weight classes. Uh, Nate Limix, Angus Arthur, and um, um, uh, uh, Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Doesn't um, this always yes, happen when you're? <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I'm sorry. I, I have the internet here, and now you're not going to be be able to remember because we're, no, because and now we're I'm and now it. yes, my my head is swirling. I'm so sorry. No, we'll, but, we'll come, it'll it'll jump to you yes. in the middle of when we're talking about. It. You mentioned uh, Arthur though, and I'll move on. And yes. you'll think of. The name you, you mentioned, Arthur. He, it's a possibility he'll play a little football, perhaps. Yeah, he's he's very interested in football. Um, that's something that he expressed expressed a strong interest in, and really uh, wanted to explore with us um, and, and talked with the, the staff. And they are open with it and fine with it. So we're we're going to let him explore that and see how it goes. Certainly, he has a lot of goals and aspirations uh, athletically in wrestling, but uh, but he is quite a football player as well. I'm trying to uh, get you off the hook here. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> By, oh, I think I found it. Uh, oh, no, that's from a year ago. That's not going to help. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll find it there eventually. Uh, let's let's uh, hit uh, – Jalen Robinson is, is with you guys now. Yes. I know it's early that he's, that he's joined you uh, from the football team. What are sort of your expectations for him? You know, Jalen right now, it's just from an evaluation standpoint. He expressed an interest to us and um, seems very excited about it right now. He's been uh, in the room for a very short amount of time trying to get into shape. And so really we're, we're going to give him the next few weeks just to see how things are going and where he lands uh, in terms of that. I mean, he, he's coming off a of football season, very different 
shape wise obviously than our sport so really uh, we don't have any expectations for how soon he would be in the lineup or if he would compete at all it's just let's let's get him in the room working out uh, get him invested in the program and see where he is at that point all right i, I don't remember which two you you did mention nate limix uh, angus arthur and, and then gavin murray gavin murray <laughs> uh, i apologize to gavin gavin we, we love gavin um new jersey boy who um you know, great attitude and work ethic. We're, we're excited for Gavin as well. Uh, I feel bad for setting you up for that and yeah, you know, having you know. the brain erase there on you. Uh, <laughs> it, it is, it's, it's, uh, it's difficult to do two sports uh, when you're in wrestling because, as we sort of mentioned earlier, your, uh, your objectives from a weight perspective are a little bit different in wrestling than maybe they are in, in football or some other sports. Th yeah, that's correct. I mean, you're talking about a six-second burst, uh, you yeah. know, in football. And, and in wrestling, you're talking about seven minutes. You want to be repetitively explosive, but it's, it's continuous action. You always have to be moving your feet and, you know, using your hands. So it is. It's very different from a shape perspective. And, and that's why, you know, we just want to take the time to see where, you know, where he's at before yeah. we make any real decisions. I talk to a lot of high school coaches, though, about their football players when, before they come to Purdue, and they often talk about how they do, uh, they do wrestle as well and how some of the, the training as far as hands and strength of hands and forearms and arms mm -hmm. really plays out well on the football field. And I know you're a wrestling coach and a football coach, but you know, those kind of things, you know, it's something that you guys really concentrate on is, is hand strength and, and getting free from people and things like that? Absolutely. I think, you know, when you're talking about um, wrestling, there's a term we use, hand fighting. You know, yeah. being able to use your hands to control your opponent, turn his shoulders, create angles to get your attacks off. Not altogether different from a football player. Maybe a defensive end who's trying to rush and you've got to get around the tackle. You know, you've got to learn how to turn his shoulders, you know, get off the line quick. That, sh that explosiveness is key in the sport. So there's a lot of skills that translate and, and can make you better. You know, in high school, I, I think you see a lot of uh, kids who excel at both because there are skills that cross over. Yeah. So tonight against Northwestern, then you, you hit the road pretty quickly. Uh, I would imagine you get on the bus, what, tomorrow? You yeah, fly? Do you fly or you, you drive tomorrow morning. Well, tomorrow morning we'll bus down to Indy and then we'll, uh, we'll catch a flight in okay, the state so college. You do, you do get to fly. Yes, That's thank good. goodness. I've taken that bus trip to, to Penn State. It's not, it's, right. not very, it's not very much fun. But an opportunity to come out and see the, the Boilermakers tonight uh, in action against, against the Wildcats. Hey, we mentioned a, a good spectator sport, and you guys get after it a little bit and it's, it's sort of fun to watch yeah it, it's great you know and, and we're you know with me being year one we're trying to uh, build the fan base uh, with me not be, having been here before so uh, you know we're just trying to take this as far as we can we want people to come out and uh, and see you know our kids work as hard as anybody and certainly are deserving of uh, the way they represent uh, Purdue yeah. thanks Tony thank you very much that's the wrestling coach Tony Ersland in his first year as he mentioned at Purdue and you can watch him and his guys tonight at 7 o'clock in Holloway Gym against Northwestern. Okay, we need to take a break. We'll be Brian back in. We'll talk a little bit of basketball. Speaking of Penn State, the Boilermakers in action there on Saturday. That coming up in just a moment. You're watching Golden Black Live.